Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Lights on Data Show. My name is George. I'm very excited to address this topic with uh, Rajiv Kapoor, who's the president and CEO at 1105 Media and the best-selling author of AI Made Simple. And we're going to talk about AI and the future of work. Welcome, Rajiv. Thanks, George. How are you, my friend? I'm very well. Looking forward to address this topic with you. It's in our faces so much every single day for the past year and a bit that I think we need to be well aware of what's going on. How can we benefit from AI? How can we yeah. integrate it within our workplace? And yeah, just make the world better. Well, I'm all yours, and, and and I hope we have, and I hope the audience listening gets really good take home value. So fire away. Yeah, yeah. So in your book, AI Made Simple. You discuss various applications of Gen AI. As you were doing that research and gathering all those examples, were there any that really like amazed you or really surprised you? Look, I, I think the easiest answer to that question is look, at the end of the day, I think all the Chat GPT stuff is just so brand new still. And when I wrote the book, it was 3.5, right? And then since then you had four come out, and then during in, in, within four, they had plugins, which I think are hit and miss. And then they have the advanced data analysis tool, which is essentially giving you a data analyst in your pocket for 20 bucks a month. Who wouldn't do that? Yeah. And now they've got the ChatGPT store and they've got custom instructions and they've got DALI integrated and they've got, so they've got the Omni model just came out and slowly rolling out to others. And so I, th I think to me, everything that's going on with ChatGPT is it's just pretty amazing. I, th I think Google's got some catch up to do. I think the Gemini model is still challenged, but I think Google's doing some great things on the medical side. So if you're a medical professional, you definitely want to check out MedGemini and AlphaFold, some of those things that Google is doing. But look, in general, I think at the end of the day, George, this is really brand new. This is like the first days of electricity or like the first days of the internet. So I think the story is still to be written in terms of what these features look like. I think but one of the, I would say beyond that, I would think another one I really enjoy is a product called HeyGen. And HeyGen is a great place to go. You can get avatars made and give them scripts and those kinds of things. So I think that's a pretty good tool. But the thing that worries probably me the most is with all these great tools, there's good AI, there's also bad AI. That, that kind of what kind of worries me probably the most in this whole thing, which is we don't, as, a, as leaders, as a society, really step up and deal with things like deep fakes and those kinds of things. It could really damage the promise of what AI can really de deliver to us as a society. Yeah, that's true. And some companies are putting together those gar guardrails in place as much as possible. But even still, it's like you said, it's advancing at such a rapid pace that we're all kind of playing catch up with everything, with the good and the bad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that catch up thing is for for some it's going to be a while. But look, I think the most e the easiest thing people can do if they're thinking about embracing this organization. Mm -hmm. It's just start being curious with the tool and just start using it. And mm -hmm. if you're going to start, if you're going to, so there's, there's the regular version, the free version. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of data security, so to speak around it, meaning it uses a train the model. If you want that to opt out, you got to go on the open AI site, fill out the form, opt out. They still takes, it takes about 30 days for that to happen. They still keep your data for some time. And so it's just, you want to be able to anonymize your data as you upload things if you want full encryption to make sure nothing gets used, then you have to go to the enterprise version, but that's really expensive. The enterprise version of, of uh, ChatGPT is really expensive, and you have to have at least 250 employees. So it's really right now targeted at a much higher end customer base. Yeah, yeah. And the cost per employee, yeah. Yeah, it's quite high for sure. I was at this event recently. Obviously, the Gen AI was a topic, and a lot of companies, they were really addressing the fact that for an organization to properly take advantage of the Gen AI features and benefits is not just use the same model that everybody's using, like how we're using ChatGPT, but to use one that is trained specifically on your company's knowledge base, data, and everything else. And that's where you're going to have that competitive advantage. I agree. Look, I think you're going to live in a world where private GPTs are going to start popping up all over the place. So, for example, you'll have your own lights on data, private GPT that's trained on all the podcasts that you've put on. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things we were mentioning before we started recording was that one of my companies is TDWI. Mm -hmm. And TDWI is right now in beta test, a, a private GPT for TDWI that's trained on all their event data. So I think, that, like I said, this is still the early days. But over time, the benefit of having these private GPTs is that 
it's really like a living, breathing agent who's fully trained on what's happening in your business that never sleeps, that never yeah. goes on vacation yeah. kind of a thing, but that's always there to answer questions about your business. And so that's the good news. And, and by, by creating these private GPTs or these super chat bots, as, as I as sometimes can call them, they're really just dry, designed to drive efficiency and productivity within the company. And if anything, I, I think it can just be accretive and help an overall organization. Yeah, yeah. So what challenges do you see that companies typically face when implementing AI or Gen AI? Yeah, that's a great question. You know what? The number one biggest challenge, I'll give you two. The first biggest challenge is people don't understand their data. To be successful in AI, you have to really know your first party data. Mm -hmm. Let me just be clear. You will not be successful with Gen AI or any kind of AI, whether it's machine learning AI or Gen AI, if you don't have really good, clean data, if you don't know how to access it, manage it, have it really tell a story with your data. If you don't know how to do that, you're going to really fail miserably at this. So spend the time, effort, and energy on really understanding your data. And if you need help with that, the, my, my TD, the TDWI company can help with that. Now, that's the first thing. The second biggest thing I see is a lot of fear, right? Oh my God, I'm going to lose my job, all those kinds of things. We were talking about that earlier as well. So it's a lot of fear. And I'm here to tell people that don't be afraid. A, it's easy to use. B, it's designed to help enhance your job. It's not about artificial intelligence. It's about augmenting intelligence. Hmm. You know, it's, it, it, and if you can do that, if you can focus on the augmenting your intelligence, augmenting what you do with your job, it'll do the one thing money can't do, which is buy time. Because right now, if you are stuck working a lot of hours and you can get an, if you can start using AI to help you with your job <clears throat> pretty soon, it's going to make you more productive. You can focus on other things. If you can, and not just from a business perspective, but also from a personal and family perspective as well. So that there's a chance in the future when, you know, you, and I'm sure you've heard of it as well, that look, in the next five years, we're all going to have our own Jarvis from, from yeah. Iron Man movies. Yeah. Just imagine how much more productive we'll be when that happens. I'm looking forward to it for sure. And like everything that we have right now, it relies within this narrow AI. And we're not yet into, um, the general AI or the super AI, but once those comes, do you think they will come? Do you think we'll see them in our lifetime? Like a super AI, like a sentient AI kind of a thing? As, yeah. Yeah. So even it's the probably, general AI, which is like anything that a human can do, AI will be able to do. And yeah, the super AI would be able to do it. Or outperform humans in nearly every cognitive task. Look, I, to answer your question, yes. And it'll happen, it'll happen in our lifetimes. And I think it's going to happen probably in the next five or six years. Okay, so that's number one. I mean, Elon Musk says two years. Other people say 10 years. So I split the bag, you put it in an app. And I think it, I actually think it's probably closer to five years. Mm -hmm. And here's the reason why. The reason why all this is happening right now is computing power is increasing exponentially, right? In the next yeah. five years, our laptops, our, our, our cell phones, whatever they might be, the technology we use is going to be trillions of times smarter than they are today. And at some point, the, the, the processing speed of what's happening is going to be so fast, it's going to be faster than the human brain. And that's just going to keep increasing and increasing, right? I read a stat that in 100 years, so imagine 100 years from today, the computing power we have today is going to be over a quadrillion times faster and stronger than it is today. Quadrillion. So when you start thinking about that, you, you start thinking about how technology evolves. So I'll give you an example. Kitty Hawk, right? The, the, the Wright brothers... I they literally flew the plane over over in Ohio. They, they, they flew the plane. How long it took to go from the day of the first Kitty Hawk plane flight to putting men on the moon? How many years that was? No, I don't. I do not. Six, I would say 60, 50 60, years. 66 years. It took mm -hmm. 66 years, right? So if you think about how fast technology evolved to enable that to happen, imagine what the next four to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years is going to look like. We, we will be living in a world of connected cars, connected cities. We'll be living in a world of, of minimal disease. I really think that we're going to find cures for cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, all these things. I think people, and look, and I think it's going to be a combination of robotics and AI. It won't just be AI alone because AI still needs a vessel. So I think you're going to see a combination of robotics. I think you're going to see robotic technology start to end going into humans. I think you're going to see people who can't see will be able to see because they're going to have a robotic eye that's going to help them see. Right. People who can't hear are going to be able to hear again. People who are deaf will be able to talk, have a voice. 
people who might be paraplegic or quadriplegic will at some point in the future be able to walk again, either through the AI and the robotics or through some sort of exoskeleton, whatever the case might be. So again, this is still early on. And I and if you just think about how technology evolves, we went from flying a paper airplane in, in, in the hills of Ohio to putting men on the moon in 65 years, 66 years. So so just think about what the next 65, 66 years are going to look like when, when, when it comes to all these things. Yeah, but as you're describing some of those scenarios, made me think of Star Trek and the Borg, and I don't know if anybody. Well, look, knows I mean, that it, it, yeah, no, and in fact, look, you're absolutely right. So one of the things, so one of the cool things in Star Trek, they talk about real time translation. Like, so you could be talking yep. Klingon, right, yep. and the and then it's being translated automatically into, in this case, English, right, and then in English it's getting translated back into Klingon into Klingon. And yeah. so that's real time. But th that exists now, right? If you saw the Omni demo from ChatGPT, they, ha they had a demo where the real time translation was happening live. Mm -hmm. And over time, I think what will happen is that that technology will eventually in the next few years make it into the AirPods, where you literally can have somebody speaking like literally you could be doing this podcast in Mandarin, I'm answering in English and it's translating back to Mandarin in real time, right? So I think those kinds of things will be will, will, will be there. That's all going to be there. And so that's, it's, it's exciting, I think, what's coming. And, and to me, when you start talking about job stuff and people's fear about job loss, look, I think there's going to be a lot of job realignment and there may be job loss. But look, there's something like nine or 10,000 startups in the AI space right now across all different segments and industries. And yeah. AI is going to have to be embraced by every single company on the planet because if they don't, they're going to get replaced by people and companies that do use AI. And because yeah. of that, I think you're going to see a lot more job creation in the future because of AI. If anything, you maybe won't need as many people doing a function. So if you have if you have five people in finance, you might need only three people in finance, right? If you have three people in HR, you might only need one or two people in HR. If you have seven people in marketing, you might need only two or three people in marketing, right? So I think, but you're but it's going to have so much more opportunity to get going to it's going to be created. I think over time, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And yes, there, there's uh, a lot going in AI for sure. The global AI market today, it's valued at a hundred billion dollars, I think. And there's over 2 million developers just working on AI apps right now. So yes, we're, we're, we're seeing a lot. I wanted to follow up with one of the things that you said there, Rajiv, with how AI will affect our future and the potential augmentation or even job loss in, in some instances, maybe even when we're going to get that super AI in place. So with the rapid advancement of these AI technologies, what skills and competencies do you think we'll need and will be essential to more professionals to really thrive in the future workplace? That's a great question. I get asked that question all the time. And I think probably the number one skill is you're going to have to really be a really good communicator and storyteller because it's all about the prompting, mm -hmm. right? And this is not about coding, right? Because I'm not expecting you to be a coder and learn Python and all that. If you want to learn it, that's fine. But to me, it's all about being able to tell a story and being and becoming a conductor with the AI. So if you think of yourself as a conductor of a Philharmonic and you have a couple of different AI solutions, how can you now conduct the AI solutions to really provide the value and the solutions that you're looking for, for you, whether it's for your personal use, your family use, or your business use? So you've got to be that conductor with the technology. So being the storyteller, being that conductor, but then be, be, and understand how to really communicate with the tool yeah. is going to be really important. I think those are the skills that people are going to have to really develop. And then when you start thinking about it also, it's going to be the ability to figure out how to properly multitask. It's going to be figuring out how to probably pro project manage these things. It's going to be properly figure out how to really not go back and go into the detail and peeling back the onion of what the response might be. Because you can put a great prompt into ChatGPT or to Gemini or Claude, Anthropic, whatever it might be. And it's just going to give you an answer. So number one, remember a couple of things. AI is not a silver bullet. Number two is that it's not infallible, meaning it's going to make mistakes. So you got to still go through it. You still got to go through the response. You got to still double, triple check the work, right? So you still got to do those things. But with that being said, if there's a certain area that you want it to be able to dive deep in, then you have to ask it to dive deeper and just keep diving deeper and deeper until you feel like you've got your full solution. Yeah. And that's yeah, that, a skill yeah. you have to develop. Very good point. And even now, the questions that you ask yourself, your colleagues, and that interaction that you need to have in order to get those results and collaborate, yeah, in a way they become exponentially more important with that interaction with AI, which is uh, compounded. But at, at least until we get that neural link in our digital twin, then we can just read our mind and 
act on our behalf. <laughs> yeah, look, I should to see what happens with the Neuralink stuff, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how te technology evolves. We'll see where it goes. Look, I, th I think if you were to ask Edison and these guys when they first elected Franklin Edison, all these guys when, ele when electricity was first kind of discovered, would we be doing a on StreamYard a podcast sitting here in Vancouver, I'm in Southern California, having full video conversations in color or whatever? They would have told you you're crazy. Yeah. So we, we don't even know what this future is going to look, look like and hold. I'm just excited to see where it goes. And, and I, 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 I just want to enjoy the ride because I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Now, with that being said, I'm also very afraid of things like deep fake issues that are out there. To me, I think deep fakes will hands down be the number one biggest crisis the world will see, almost the same level as potentially as harmful as maybe nuclear weapons for something. Because with deep fake technology, there's nothing stopping anybody from using AI to do really bad things. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll ask your listeners, if you have a minute, please go Google CFO Hong Kong deep fake. And yeah. I don't know if you've heard this story, right? I George, have, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah you know, so if you just look at that one story, that's $25 million a company lost because of deep fake technology. You think about what's happening with Taylor Swift's face on, on bodies of women doing things that they shouldn't be doing or what are on porn, porn and whatever. So then you have the stories of people who are being, you know, who are doing like revenge AI on people, right? So those are the things that really worry me the most about the future of AI. Yeah. And just for those that don't know the CFO in Hong Kong story, just paraphrasing and simplifying the whole story from what I remember is CFO was off on a trip, I think business trip and contacts, I think one of their financial analysts or anyway, somebody in the procurement or finance department there asking them to, Hey, there's, there's this payment that we need to make to a company, please transfer the money. And the person was a little bit reluctant as, oh, that's a bit odd, bit odd request and the way it came through. But the CFO is like, oh, let's just get on a Zoom call. And it's me and some of our colleagues. They get on a Zoom call and he's basically, they're having a, a virtual conversation, face-to-face -face conversation. The analyst or whoever it was, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that, okay, I'm, I'm talking to the CFO. That seems legit. Everything was deep fake. They wire transferred the money into a account that was not for the purpose that was advertised ads and the company lost quite a bit of money. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. yeah. What's crazy about that story is that not only was the CFO deep faked, but all the but the other three people in that Zoom were also deep faked. It looked like them, sounded like them, moved like them. So that's so here you are. You're this analyst at this company in the finance department, and you're talking to four people who literally look and sound like your colleagues. And your boss says, "Okay, we're going to do this, right?" It's just yeah. crazy. It's, it's yeah. scary. What, what could happen? And the, the, so that's the thing. That right there is the thing that worries me the absolute most about AI in the future. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a very valid worry. Again, as you're mentioning some of these things, uh, something that I was thinking of in the future, what might change is how TDWI is offering really great courses and information for upcoming professionals, current professionals to up their skills. Uh, maybe in the future, it would also offer training models for a bots and instances and Hey, do you want to buy this package? So your AI is a bit better and conversationalist in the world of finance or so, yeah, you just buy the data. Set. Yeah. And TDWI, yeah. And TDWI is doing some great things So we have an event coming up called the AI boardroom. So if you go to TDW, T like Tom, D like David, WS and whiskey, eyes in India.org. If you go there or you go to .com as well, it'll take you that you want to look at AI boardroom It's co-located with our big Orlando event. And that's really our first big step into having an event where we really want to start training the C-suite on AI. Because in my view, the reason why we're doing this is because this has to be a top-down initiative in the company. This is not a bottoms-up. AI is not a bottoms-up. This is a top-down. The CEO, the CMO, the whole C-suite has to own this and drive this down in the organization. And so that, that's really the goal. And so we're excited about what they're going to do. It's, pre it's pretty awesome. So you, you guys can go check it out. Thank you. And you should yeah, talk to Jim. You, 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 you should talk to Jim and to Megan and see what you can do there. Help them out. Yeah, happy to. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk after this call. Uh, and speaking of of that, do you have any um, recommendations on the ethical considerations that organizations should keep in mind when adopting AI technologies in the workplace? Yeah. Look, I just we just talked about one big one, right? We're really watching out for that. So the deep fake stuff is. Look, at the end of the day, with with. With good AI, there's going to be bad AI. And 
You got to make sure you have really good policies and procedures in place. Watch out what you're uploading in, into all of these tools. Make sure if you're uploading anything, anonymize your data as much as possible. And then just mm -hmm. figure out how you can use these things for good. If you want to see the world burn, then you can trust me. You can AI will be a great way to see the, the, for that to happen, right? You know, figure, you know, it, it, a, a lot of this is going to really come on the on, on human consciousness to really figure out, say, okay, here are the things that we're going to do to make this world a better place. And I think AI can enable that. But at the end of the day, the low-hanging fruit is just be careful with your data and, and make sure that we are absolutely, you're anonymizing things, that you're absolutely really putting guardrails in place to make sure that you've got good policies in place for the business. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, like you said, I just want to add to it. Let's use AI to do things better, but also let's use AI to do better things. Yeah. To end on a positive note, are there any other maybe benefits or things that you're looking forward to that AI will bring into the future of work? Besides the translation one, I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah. Look, I think there's, wow, I think there's so much coming down the road. It's, look, to me, I think, like, to me, one of the things I found the best use cases for AI is it's an amazing brainstorming partner. It's an amazing strategy partner, right? You give it a persona. You, you can give AI a persona saying, hey, I want you to be like over my shoulder, you got Steve, you got Steve Jobs, right? Say, I want you to be an entrepreneur like Steve Jobs and help me come up with a new technology product that does this. And this is where I'm stuck or this is where I need some help. And can you help me think through this process or this challenge or this issue? So I think a lot of those things are coming. I think data visualization and understanding data, I think over time, because of Microsoft Copilot and all this technology being directly integrated into Excel, Word, PowerPoint, LinkedIn, some of these things are going to make our job much more efficient because you can be able to, you'll be able to, it's not that great yet in Copilot, it's getting better. I imagine it's probably still probably about a year away, but imagine being able to go to PowerPoint and say, hey, give me a slide on on my podcast with Rajiv Kapoor or whatever, and it creates the slide for you and it creates a whole presentation about Rajiv and you and or TDWI or whatever the case might be, right? So I just think those things are coming in. If you think about just the overall efficiency and productivity gains in a business are just natural things that are coming. And I think if you use yeah. the AI the right way, it's going to uncover a lot of cool ideas that you have thought about yet for your business. Love it. Well, thank you so much, Rajiv, for um, being on the Lights on Data show, putting the lights on AI in the future of work, and really looking forward to hearing more about everything that you are doing and seeing the third edition of your book as well. No, I'm excited. Like the second edition did, took some time. I, I think if I do these every year, I, I, I've been thinking about maybe instead of keep writing new editions, maybe I'll just start a YouTube channel where I'm just updating it on a, a YouTube channel instead. But it might be easier. So we'll see where it goes. All right. Thank you again. Take care, my friend.